Hello everyone, thank you for joining us at this news hour on Ekinaus Television live from my headquarters in Cameroon's economic capital Dwala. I am Babla Jonathan. Civil society leaders describe the burning down of a Catholic church in the southwest region of the Republic of Cameroon and the kidnapping of priest and a reverend sister as satanic, abominable and unacceptable. They were speaking to us today and the mayor of Manfi has called on those who kidnapped the men of God to release them as soon as possible because this is unacceptable. Prices of basic commodities continue increasing on the markets in the Republic of Cameroon where the National Institute of Statistics says that the Cameroon, uh, the Cameroonian economy is quickly and gradually uh, recovering, is gradually recovering from the economic consequences of the COVID-19 with the gross domestic product that has moved from 0.3% in 2020 to 3.6% in 2022. Condemnations continue rising to the sky from across the board. Condemnation condemning uh, civil society leaders, condemning the burning down of a church in the southwest region of the Republic of Cameroon and the kidnapping of priest and a reverend sister. And we talked to some civil society leaders here in Douala. And this is what they told us in this report compared by Innocent to civil society actors, the abduction of five priests, a reverend sister, and two lay Christians by armed men, suspected to be separatist fighters after the arson attack on the St. Mary Catholic Church in Chang Village in the Manu Division of the Southwest Region, is a satanic, abominable, and an unacceptable deed. It's a terrible thing. It's really very satanic. It's abominable to attack a church during period of crisis, especially during war, people run and go and hide in the church, the house of God. The house of God is sacrosanct. That means these boys have no fear for God. They have no fear for humanity. It's high time we start talking to their leaders. You cannot say that you are fighting for a people and you are adopting them and you are requesting for ransom. I will not support. If we report issues of the military excesses, then we should report issues of the excesses and war crimes being perpetrated on both sides. The abduction, according to Nji Lucas, is a gross human rights violation, which is unhelpful. According to the Rome Statute on the rights to education, economic and social rights, this is a total violation. The church mediates in resolving crisis. So when you attack the church, you cannot have that support that you're thinking. Nji Lucas goes further to school the abductors on a lesson they missed out before their actions. There are places that you will not attack during war times. You have schools, you have hospitals, you have churches and mosques. During war times, any attack on these places is considered war crime. During war time, you have the women and the children and the elderly during wartime, any attack on this caliber of persons, it's a war crime. Dr. Businiba states that the abductions, killings, and abuses ongoing in the Anglophone regions of Cameroon have prolonged and time to put a stop mark to them. It is high time we stop this. It is high time government also look for measures to solve this problem. And I think that the international war has to intervene in this and pick their leaders abroad and these civil society actors think it is time for the war belligerents to change from their evil ways and for the government authorities to be sincere and organize a truly inclusive dialogue to end these atrocities in Anglophone Cameroon. The mayor of Manfi, Manu Division, Southwest Region of the Republic of Cameroon, is calling on those who uh, took away the priest and the other servants of God in the Catholic Church in Chang to release them right now. 
and he says that they should be released immediately because it is an abomination it is unacceptable according to the men of Manfi and all the civil society leaders that you've heard speaking to Innocent as in, in that report. Now take a listen to the mayor of Manfi municipality, Robert Tabenchon. Strongly condemned uh, whoever that burns this, uh, this church and adopt uh, some priests and some reverend sisters. I have never seen where if there's crisis, uh, whoever is disgruntled who attack the churches or attack hospitals. It is uncalled for. I'm using this medium, I'm using this platform now to plead with my brothers and sisters that they should allow the men of God to go. They are not part of the problem. Please, I'm begging them. They know that I am usually begging them to lay down their arms. As you hear what the president has said, please, they should allow men of God free. They don't have anything. You people are requesting for 50 million. Looking at these men of God now, are you sure they can produce 50 million? What do you people want to do with 50 million? What links does the Reverend Fathers, the, 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 the sisters, have to do with this crisis. I am begging. I continue to beg my brothers. I continue to beg my sisters. Please, please, I am begging you. I understand that there, there was a problem. And that was why the president called for national dialogue. Let us wait and see what this pregnant woman will give birth to. Please. I also use this same medium to call upon the government that it is not easy with us local elected officials. It is really weighing on us. Today you go out there preaching peace. Today you tell them that, you tell your people that there is peace. You people come out. Tomorrow they will go and burn. You take us back to the same uh, situation. They should hasten up with the decentralization, please. Whatever they have to do, they should fasten. They, they should fasten up. They should hasten up with the decentralization. The fifteen percent that has been set aside for the councils should be given. So as much as it can enable local officials, local elected officials, to go down to the root and solve this problem, please, sir. Ah, I'm begging my brothers. I'm begging my sisters. Release the fathers. Release the priest, release the Reverend Sister. They don't have anything to do. The mayor of Manfe in Manual Division, Southwest region of Cameroon, Robertson, Tabin Chong, speaking there to our Kumba based correspondent, Zaiboy. And in reaction to the bitter reactions of the Bishop of Manfe concerning the incident at uh, the Catholic Church in Chang. That is uh, the Catholic Church in Chang. One of the civil society leaders who spoke to Innocent, as I said, that the bishop should converge the Christians, should gather the Christians together, encourage them, and push them to pray against such things. Take a listen to Dr. Busi Neba. The bishop came out, and he's a newly ordained bishop, and he was really bitter on it. Uh, I look at it from from the perspective of the, the Christians. I don't say that the bishop was hard on this Christian in times like this, as the bishop bishop and as the Lord of the church, as a chief shepherd, is supposed to gather the people, he's supposed to comfort the, the parishioners. But I want to say that he was really hard on the people, that he knows that they are their children. But it's true to an extent they are children, but I think that as God's people, he should comfort them and help also the parishioners and the Christian. If they have an idea of those who came, they should report that to the state. It's very important. And I think that the bishop should be soft to the Christian. I saw one mother really crying and wanted to talk to the bishop. And the bishop was saying that it's their children and the bishop was really hard. And I think that the bishop has to calm down his temperament, his, his psychology of war 
and he has to understand human interaction, human behavior, human thinking in terms of world. He has to calm down and rethink and comfort his parishioner. It's not time to close the church. It's not. You cannot blame the parishioner. It's not their fault. But I think that the church also has to involve in solving this crisis. Uh, we saw the case of South Africa where late uh, Desmond Tutu had to solve the crisis in South Africa. Away from the crisis-stricken northwest and southwest regions of the Republic of Cameroon, insecurity is also imposing its serve on inhabitants of the rest of the country, the francophone parts of the country, especially in the major uh, cities. And in the town of Bafusam, capital of the west region of the country, we now bring to you updates on the kidnapping of a Form 3 student of government Balinko High School, Bafusam. And the police has carried out some has carried out some investigations, and we have more details in this report compiled by Smart Jikan Gabriel. After several days of investigation by the elements of the judicial police in Bafusam, the man suspected to have kidnapped a Form Three student of Government High School Bafusam have been shown to the public. The suspect says his love for money and the desire to continue schooling abroad pushed him to commit the act. The goal is to get money because I truly wanted to continue with my education abroad. I needed to look for a way. I didn't have any intention of harming the young man. He blamed his former employer to be at the origin of this act, even though it wasn't the first time. It's not the first time I'm doing this. I blame my boss in Yaoundé who didn't pay my salaries for two months. The truth is when you sit without doing anything, thought of how to make money comes to your mind. I'm sorry for what I did because it is not the first time I kidnapped the child of a commander. During the reconstitution of how the abduction of the little Form 3 student took place in the West region, the suspected kidnapper showed the security forces how he got into the Form 3 class, pretending to be their teacher, before he successfully took away the child, claiming they were going to buy the course materials, only for them to end up at a resident in Deng Deng. The effort spent at finding the location where the suspect had kept his victim was at first difficult but wasn't an impossible one for the security forces. We immediately activated our research networks that notwithstanding the knowledge of the kidnapper who didn't make calls at the exact location, we managed to locate the place which was Ndengdeng in Jedem, subdivision of Nkunki Division. It was last September 7, 2022, that an alert was raised at GBHS Bafusam about the adoption of a Form 3 student and the demand of 3 million francs as ransom. After the reconstitution of the act, the alleged kidnapper has been taken to court for justice to take its course. And insecurity is also a major problem along Cameroon's borders with some of our neighbors, including the Federal Republic of Nigeria and Equatorial Guinea and how to step up security along the borders between Cameroon and neighboring Equatorial Guinea and also to enhance territorial stability were on the table of discussion during an audience granted Cameroon's minister delegate at the presence in charge of defense Joseph Betty Asomo by Equatorial Guinean President Teodoro Biangema Bazagon. For me, Armstrong Sander, report. Two Guineans will head to the post in a general election this November 2022 and ensuring transborder security with its giant neighbor Cameroon was key on the list of things discussed by the country's president Teodoro Obiangema Mbazagok and Cameroon's defense minister Joseph Betia Sumo, special envoy of President Paul Biat Mlabu, bearer of a message from President Bia. The 20 minutes audience also featured strategies to reinforce border security since the signing of an accord in 2020 
of the suspension of works on the projects to erect a war between Cameroon and Equatorial Guinea, the half hour of Cameroonians living in the Equatorial Guinea, and their compliance with the country's legislation, as well as the verdict passed by Cameroon on individuals arrested by Cameroon in an attempt to engage a coup d'état in Equatorial Guinea. Problem Speaking to the men and women of the press at the end of the Terratet, defense boss Joseph Betiasomo said the words from President Paul Bia to his friend and brother Obiangema Mbazagog was sealed. He also said President Paul Bia charged him to transfer his strategic analysis on some strategic issues to President Obiangema Mbazagog. The visit that falls directly within the traditional consultative meetings of both countries also provided an opportunity for the Defense Minister of Cameroon to have a 40-minute terrace with the Vice President of the Republic of Equatorial Guinea, Chodorin Obiangema Mange. Both men in their chat expanded on mutualizing efforts for a better, stronger and a heavier Cameroon-Equatorial Guinea long border. And another issue threatening the peace, stability of the Republic of Cameroon, especially the main cities, particularly the nation's political capital, Yaoundé, and the economic capital, Douala, is the problem of land disputes in the nation's capital, Yaoundé. A young woman, a single mother of seven, is now sending distress calls to Yaoundé administration after she was hindered from doing business at the place where she has been doing business for several years, which she claims to have bought since 1999. And the problem is emanating from a land dispute between her and another uh, woman. We bring in to you some details in this report compiled by Fomi Armstrong Sander. Behind this wall under construction are two stores. The proprietor is unable to enter the stores since last Thursday. She says the construction started in her absence. Upon her arrival, she and her brother were arrested and detained at the 14th police district for close to 12 hours. At the origin of the matter is a land dispute pitting Bridget and an individual claiming ownership of the land on which the stores are constructed. The lady who ordered the construction of the wall says she inherited it from her father. But Bridget says she bought part of the land in the 1998 and the other part in 2022 for two different persons. We tried to get the other party's version of the story to no avail. Meantime, the single mother of seven who has two physically challenged parents to take care of is stranded. Prices of basic commodities have continued increasing on the market in the Republic of Cameroon and it is becoming much more difficult for households to put three square meals on the table every day. Lucille Bienko compiles the reactions of uh, some Cameroonians in this report. This is Ngalim, Kinehang, Bambutu's division of the West Region. Traders of Kinehang market complain of an increase in the price of corn. They say a bucket of corn that used to sell for 2,000 francs now sells at 2,500 francs. In Buddha, we sell a kilo of corn for 130 francs, a bucket for 2,200 francs. But 
today we are being forced to buy it for 2,500 francs. This is not usual. We cannot cope. We prefer to go back. Farmers complain that the prices of agricultural inputs have skyrocketed. It is now very difficult for peasants because the price of agricultural input has increased to the extent that even us farmers who cultivate corn cannot cope. Normally, the price of agricultural input was at 5,000 francs, 6,000 francs, but now it is sold for 45,000 francs. Farmers also say that the modification of the prices is as a result of the upsage in the prices of basic commodities. Farmers face a lot of problems. Everything has increased in the market. Rice, salt, in fact, everything. How can rice increase and corn does not? We find ourselves selling a bucket of corn for a price lesser than 2.5. So this is the reason we decided not to sell today. The business persons affirm that the price increase initiated since on Saturday has spread to other markets like Galim, Bati and Bamenjin. They intend to meet the authorities of the city of Ngalim in the coming days to present the situation. The National Institute of Statistics says that Cameroon is slowly, slowly recovering from the devastating economic consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic. In its latest report, the institution reveals that the gross domestic product of Cameroon has moved from 0.3% in 2020 to 3.6% in 2021. Immaculate for way. The Ministry of Public Health, after sending out a circular in the month of August against the commercialization of skin whitening products, went ahead to seize and destroy cosmetic products with hydroquinone. This action was less appreciated by the employer's cattle. Jikam went ahead to write to the Ministry of Public Health and copy the Prime Minister's office, asking for the move to be reconsidered because of its adverse effects on enterprises. In response, a communique from the Prime Minister's office signed on September 14, 2022, suspends every action by the Ministry of Public Health on the control of cosmetic products being imported into or exported for commercialization. It reads, under the strict instructions of the Prime Minister, there is a necessity to harmonize the conformity control of imported food and cosmetic products. The Prime Minister's circular calls on the Ministry of Public Health to consent as soon as possible with results of mind, industries and technological development and other consent ministries to agree on the application of law number 020 of 11 December 2018 relating to food security. In its latest response, the Minister of Public Health respecting the Prime Minister's order has instructed all heads of health posts at Cameroon's borders plus regional delegations for public health to as well suspend the application of the August circular which was aimed at restricting the importation of certain cosmetic products into Cameroon. And Abila reporting there on decisions of the Prime Minister Chief Dr. Joseph Tianguti and the Minister of Public Health Manauta Malachi intended to regulate the commercialization of cosmetic products in the Republic of Cameroon. Now back to Immaculate Fugue with details on the latest report of the National Institute of Statistics on the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the country's economy and the institution is saying that Cameroon is gradually recovering from the devastating consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic with the gross domestic product moving or uh, stepping up from 0.3% in 2020 to 0.3% in 2020 to 3.6% in 2021. Mark Lithuania. Cameroon has achieved a mild economic recovery within the year 2021. According to the National Institute of Statistics, the gross domestic product has increased from 0.3% to 3.6% in the year 2021. The tertiary, secondary and primary sectors have all noticed an increase in percentage within this period. 
due to relaxation of some barrier measures such as the temporal border closure, the transport and tourism sector have been able to get back on their feet. The report, however, notes that hydrocarbon extraction industries are yet to experience a significant increase. Its 2022 gross domestic product stood at 0.2% and in 2021, it moved to 0.5%. Agriculture remains the major backbone of the country's gross domestic product. According to the report, for Cameroon to fully achieve regional trade potential, they need to develop a regional trade policy to foster industrialization and harness regional and continental opportunities. The report underscores the importance of sustained growth in trade as a key driver for Cameroon to achieve its goal of becoming emergent by 2035. That's it for the first part of this newscast talking point. Is up next. guest today is a clergyman, Reverend B. Christian. Thank you for joining us today. What's your take on the latest incident recorded in the northwest in the southwest regions of Cameroon crisis, notably in the locality of Chang in Manfi, Manyo Division, southwest region of the country, a Roman Catholic church building set ablaze. I've had the uh, so economic crisis in Cameroon. I believe that uh, the both sides should stay away from spiritual uh, infrastructures and spiritual uh, institutes because uh, I believe that these spiritual institutes they are there to bring peace, they are there to harmonize the two parties to make them to to come back to, to reasoning and to have a common goal or a common way to solve their problems. And if they have gone to this level to burn a church, you know, it is a heartbroken because that's where people go with problems, with trauma, with stress, with depression, you know, to have hope. And we, as we said, God is our hope and the Lord Jesus Christ is our hope. And if they are going to burn the, 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 a, a, worship, a place of worship, it's really a disheartening thing. It's really a heartbreaking thing. And I believe that that whosoever have done that, I don't know who have done that, but whosoever have done that, I mean, it is a, it is really a, a, a curse to show a person or show a group of persons that have done that because the house of worship is the house of God. And we believe that even in the war from, even in war structures and laws, houses of worship, schools, hospitals are, are no go zones. That nobody, whoever it may be, whether you are government forces or you are separatists, you don't have no right to pass in those areas. So it is a very sympathetic situation that we find ourselves that a house of God was put down to ashes. And that uh, burning down the house of God, the servants of God were taken away, priests and other. Uh, servants who were working in that Catholic church, in that parish of the Roman Catholic Church in Chang. Uh, what analysis of this? I cannot analyze, you know, the morals of the priest, their health, you know, you just imagine that you are moving for out of an environment that you have used to, to in a strange place that you don't know, maybe water, you cannot drink good water, you cannot have good food for yourself, shelter, maybe they, they have trek for a distance that they have not trekked before. You understand? Pain in the bush, mosquitoes, and other things that these young people, these, uh, these men of God are going through. And I want to just say that it is, uh, it is if we analyze it, we discover that these people are going through a traumatic situation now. That I don't know how God really need to help them to come back into their normal psychological balance to see me to, to come back and really do their function well because it's something that you have not experienced in life and experience something out of your will, out of durex, out of a sort of horrible way that you do not expect. It's, it traumatized them, even in a even in their calling. Sometimes there are some things that you go through and start to ask yourself, truly, did God call me? But you know, in the call of God, there's also challenges. And those challenges, sometimes they become some horrible in such a way that we just look unto God. And we believe that truly now they are looking unto God because we are just trying to cite, uh, try to analyze what they are going through now and where they are. 
maybe they are they are being you know brutal uh, you know tortured they are being you know uh, threatens they are being now uh, you know giving some food that they cannot maybe they are not able to eat it's sitting i don't know the type of place that's sleeping what is mosquito is biting them and i don't know why some of them is sick because sometimes when you go through trauma your chemist the chemistry of your body you know have imbalance and sometimes illness might can just come in front of can just fall upon you instantly i don't know some of where some of them are falling that type of situation i just we just pray god that go ahead just help them in that situation Looking at the situation today uh, in which uh, protected areas in crisis and conflict or better still war situations like churches and schools are now targeted. What is your opinion about the evolution of the conflict in the northwest and southwest regions of the country? Are we really moving towards a restoration of peace and normalcy as we've often heard from our authorities? have what we call propaganda machines and they have machineries as of those um, uh, propagandas and machineries they will want to do something that will hurt the other the other parties and that's why you see sometimes they go beyond the normal well, situation that they find themselves or the normal what they are pursuing and when you realize that schools hospitals that are that are no go zones and and, and and churches that are no go zones have been touched you realize that some people now they have come out from the really question or what they were looking for, the, 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 the really vision of what they were looking for. I don't know, those who are looking for separation, what is separation or independence, or they want us to go back to a normal uh, 1962 uh, accord, and believe that we should have a way of doing things. We should stand and do things like mature people, keeping away our grievances our target from those areas from schools hospitals and, and churches because those are places that even in the war even in the normal uh, international policy those are war crime when any party goes to church and it a place but you find that that the both parties have shunned away from or have shied away from this war this this, this international law and they are violating it because i don't think that when a child goes to school it is the future of that child that will is at stake. When you come and destroy, uh, or you come to put uh, to dramatize the child in a school environment, that child cannot more learn uh, with, 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 with his normal senses. The child becomes psychologically, you know, impaired, you know, to reason the way the child was supposed to reason. And those who are also going to like to hospitals, and somebody is on drip, and you come and you know, like what happened in Shishong, where I heard that uh, one time. The, 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 the men of the uniform, the, the ministry went there and they were threatening uh, the, the, the establishment. That's what we think that the government, the, gov the government need to address. The government need to address. They, this military, they have to be in the military to order. Don't go and threaten people who are healing. And when there's war conflict, we believe that we have we, we, we have a cause we are doing a cause, uh, conflict management. When it concerns hospitals, churches, and schools, it's for everybody. Whether you are separatist or your government, it's just to be up, it's just to, re, to, to rehabilitate you, your mind, your stand, so that you can psychologically be a feedback to the society. So when, when you are being, that two places are targeted, it becomes, you know, a diversity situation that people have become frustrated. What do you think about what is today qualified as a hard reaction? of the Bishop of Murphy uh, pointing uh, to alleged complicity by the Christians of that parish who are said not to be helping the situation. There are sometimes when somebody is angry, when somebody is frustrated, uh, you know, with a situation like that, the, his force, uh, the Bishop can be forced to say whatever he wants to say because of the frustration that is in front of him. But I still believe that as a servant of God, he have to reframe himself. He have to, you know, calm down, manage his anger, and uh, and let us try to see how we can we can see find out the situation that is in front of us. Because at this particular point of time, they need to first of all to investigate what have already gone, what have what happened, who have done that. Because if you point finger in another direction that you, we don't, you don't know it, that is it maybe it's coming from this other direction, you may be referring to the wrong person, thereby also causing another more trouble than solving the problem. So we pray that they can calm down. That church will still be rebuilt. I believe that 
Catholic institution are institution that I know that they, they, they have institution from different angles that can support the rebuild of that institution of that very church in that uh, in that area. So they should not be he should not hesitate, you know, to meet his followers, uh, uh, priests, and let them sit down and talk and see how they can bring life back to that same area. Rather than you know, I know there is anger. But we should control our anger when it comes to such a situation because, you know, pointing a finger to a person that you, have, you are not investigating is called that person may pose another pro serious crisis again in that environment. The villagers are also helpless. The villagers are helpless. I don't think that the village can stand against the military or against the, those, the, 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 the separatists. The villagers cannot stand. They are just helpless in the situation that we find ourselves. So we cannot just push the stuff to the 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 population because the population they there first of all when they don't have guns they don't have any match if they have so of those people that make like that it's also their children that have decided to take their own calm which even international law still recognize as human beings as uh, as human beings that have his own right so there was even in war the person even is a separatist is a angry is a terrorist he still have his own right and that right to also be respected so no matter who it may be we should be calm. And I pray that God will inspire the bishop more to really come back and then really embrace the population and let the bishop and the population see how they can rebuild the institution back. Now, before the priest and the other, uh, the servants of God kidnapped, there were other persons, notably divisional delegates, were uh, kidnapped in the Indian division. One of them killed and more than two years uh, have elapsed. Nothing has been said about them. The president of the House of Chiefs of the Northwest region also taken away. And uh, today, nothing is said about them. What do you think about this? The government needs to step in and solve this issue. We should stop doing pumping, pranking, blaming games, going around, doing things. And the other time, I don't think you on the news that, that they meant the Basically, have said that this, they have abandoned uh, the late switch uh, talks and the military will solve the problem. I don't think the military can solve the problem. This is just to keep another, open another door for many innocent civilians to die. Because I believe that when you are a government or you are working under the government or they, they, you are as a citizen of the country, it is the responsibility of the government to make sure that those citizens are in good health, their properties are in good, they, 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 they are protected, and they live in a, in a very scenario environment. And when we see a situation like that in Zian, where government officials, they were kidnapped, the other one in Batibo were kidnapped up to today, they don't know where he is. And the government have done, done no investigation to give the population even what they have done what so far and what their, their findings. You know, it's come a decided happening situation because they will keep on kidnapping people, keep on, keep on dying, and their life will continue losing. People will remain Yaoundé. And they will just be giving instruction and be telling you Yaoundé that things are fine, things are okay. And we don't, I don't think, I just want to pray that governments will sit down and make sure. To me, I believe that. We should revive the Anglophone, uh, you know, General Anglophone Conference. So the Anglophones should sit down and talk to one another. Let them bring out their, problem, their, their problems and the table it to the government. And let the government see into it. Because only using the, the, those who are in government to bring statements, to go to their people and tell them that they will do this, they will do this, and then give them uh, promises that they will never fulfill. And then finally they find themselves that the uncoffee that we some of us thought that it maybe have gone to a to a, 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 a totally slow down to a, at least to 10 percent you know almost getting finished is coming back at fetch shows that it's they are not solving the problem because if we continue to take use our own our own elites to make mis, uh, mass pass and say that it's peace it's peace uh, peace mass pass we play football we say it's peace uh, football. All those types of marathon say it's peace marathon. It will not help the situation where I find myself. We need to put the anglophone down to sit down and talk. Let those in the government and those that are not in the government sit down on the table. That is being it's a neutral ground for them to talk. Let them talk out their problems and let the table into the government so that people's lives will be safe. People's property will be safe. People will not go through this trauma and this depression that they are going through. So the one thing I the thing I'm just saying is that this for, for government to stop if the government really loved the anglophones. Do you think that the deployment of special forces uh, can help the situation, can help the security and defense forces in targeting the military component of the crisis? 
They are unfortunate that the government have chosen that they want to, they have abandoned the speech talk and they want to seek special forces. Those special forces that are coming but to kill, let me be tell you, let me be very clear. They are just coming, maybe they are coming with the agenda to destroy and to kill Southern Cameroonians. Because I don't see how the forces that have been fighting this war from, from, half, from more than four years to date, and today we say that we want to be special. How special is that those forces? Are they forces that are coming you know, to seek? Because we see a lot of scenario where, like for example, what happened in Boya, where car was born, there was a gunshot, and the military just raked the area. And they killed people, somebody are like, they shot somebody in in Malingo. I mean, sorry, in a checkpoint in Boya. A policeman shot somebody down, and today nobody's investigating to ask the question, what happened? So it's less special for, I don't know why they're giving command to kill without no, without no remorse. Or they are coming to kill so that the government will back them and let they say that they, and let they find a propaganda way or machine way to say that uh, this is the, uh, the ambassador boys are killing southern Carolina or they are dying because of hunger. I don't know. Because there's nothing that as we have said, even the former uh, African uh, American uh, uh, Chubinagi have said that this war war cannot cannot solve this crisis that we have. War cannot solve it, gun cannot solve it, military cannot solve it. So if the government is thinking of special forces, I don't think that those special forces that are coming to bring peace, maybe they are coming to further put the people into further into into misery, into pain, into a kind of devastating situation that I mean I don't know uh, how thank it looks like. Thank you so much for your time. I should emphasize that the authorities, including the Minister of Territorial Administration, the Defense Minister, and of course the Minister of Communication and others, have repeatedly said the military is deployed to the northwest and southwest regions. The armed forces are there not to kill, not to destroy, but to protect the territorial integrity of Cameroon, the people, and their properties despite the accusations, the allegations raining down, some recognized, some accepted by the Ministry of Defense. This emphasis is made time and again that the soldiers are there to protect the territorial integrity of Cameroon, the people, and the properties, and also to uh, fight in the perspective of restoring peace and normalcy in those two regions. And this is where we end this edition of the 6 p.m. primetime newscast on Equinox Television, coming up next live from Cameroon's political capital, Yaoundé, Equinox Soir. Stay with us. <laughs>